It's important when we're working in Harmony that if we want to take advantage of certain features, we have to pay attention to our different art layers. Now these art layers exist for each of our drawing layers. So each drawing layer will have those four art layers. So I'm going to start out, I'll just turn on my light table. So if I draw my line art here on this layer, and I'm going to create some line art. Now, if I want to have color art for it, I could have automated that process otherwise because if I go to the color art layer, grab a fill color, grab the paint bucket, you know, it doesn't do anything. Let's go back to the line art layer. I use the select tool, I can select, and now we see there's an option right here, which the tooltip will tell us it creates color art from the line art. So if I click on that, and now I go to the color art layer, we have a shape there that I can now grab my color and it fills so then that works. So if you know this is the method you're going to be using that you want to do that you can also turn it on inside the pencil tool automatically create color artwork so I don't have to repeat that process. Let me go back and choose my line art color and now this time I'm going to Create that. Oh, but I don't want to create it on my line art. I want to do it on or on my color. I want to do it on my line art layer. Okay, so now if I go to the color art layer and grab my paint bucket, we'll see that I can actually fill it right away. Back to the line art. Grab my pencil. Now I'm going to go to my third layer here, and this time I am going to be. Well, I'm going to switch back to my line color. And so Control Alt or Command Option allows me to spin my animation surface so that I have. a little bit more control over my line while I am working. Shift and the letter M as in mouse will bring us back and because I have it automatically creating my line art, boom, it's filled on the color art layer. So we are good to go. Now if I take each one of these drawing layers that I have here and if I select all three, shift click, select them all, I can add a peg to them. And now I'm going to use the rotate tool, make sure peg selection mode is on, that makes my life a little bit easy. And so now if I, so I hit escape on the keyboard so nothing is selected and now I can Click with the rotate tool. Oh, missed. Let's try again. Relocate that peg. Hit escape. Click on the next one. Locate a peg. Hit escape. Click. Line it up. So we've lined up these different layers here. Now, if we go back into our node view. We will see it looks like a little bit of a cluster. So let's do command or control F twice and click on the bottom display. I'm just going to say order up. Yep, there we go. That spaces it out. So now we have some layers. Now if I'm doing a whole character, I want to use a backdrop, set everything up. I might even want to set up a composite just for these layers, but because this is all that's in this particular example, I'm not going to worry too much about it right now. We can see how it's been organized, but when we are doing a three-part limb, we also, if I, uh, right here, uh, so 
Command or Control Shift and the letter P adds a peg to it because if I click here and just hit Command or Control P, you know, it brings it up here. Well, I guess if we have one, it doesn't really matter which one we use because it was selected versus um, doing uh, whether we have the shift, but if we have multiple items selected, then we need the shift in there, I forgot. So if we were adding the pegs all in this node view, we could have done it that way. So this now, we can see this is giving me for my three-part limb, I'm now using five pegs. Let's go back into the normal view going to zoom back out a little bit and let's go grab some of those intermediate pegs and set those pivot points so now I can set the shoulder up here and go to the whole lower arm so we've now configured our pegs so we've made a properly constructed limb and it's ready I can animate it so I can move but we can see we get you know we have some issues with it you know, at the joints, because I got these lines, and what if I don't want those lines to be there? How could I get rid of these lines and make this smooth? Well, I could delete some of the outlines. I could create additional layers of drawing artwork called patches, cover it up. But Harmony Premium is pretty awesome, because what Harmony Premium has on it is it has the ability to use auto patches. So I'm going to just delete those keyframes. So now we're back to normal, good to go. Now auto patches are a node. Now we can find them in our node library. Let's try again. Um, I'm using the mouse and a stylus so my computer's getting a little confused at times. So I'm looking here, I'm like, okay, where is auto patch? What is it going to be under? And if you haven't looked through the nodes before, I encourage you to do so. One way you can find it is just type in auto, and now we see we have auto patch, and that's what we're going to be looking for here. So this will allow us to find it, and we can just drag a node from here into the node view. So that's one way to get that node to appear. We're going to need two auto patches because we're patching the wrist and the elbow. So the other way that we can put that auto patch in, I'm just going to full screen my node view, zoom in on it a little bit so it's easier to see what we are going to be working with. I have to space things out a little bit more as I can right click. And then under insert, you can see how we have lots of different options going on here. And it's a matter of like, okay, well, which one do I want? Do I want deformations? Do I want constraints? Am I trying to combine things? Well, sort of on here. But what we're looking at under filter, we're looking for isolate. That happens to be where it is, and that's where we can find auto patch. So if you remember where it is, Right clicking and inserting is a great way to get to it. If you don't remember where it is, it's easier to pull it out of the node library and drag it out. Now, because we can't have two nodes with the same name, this one made it auto patch and auto patch underscore one. No big deal. So I'm going to stretch things out here a little bit because we need a little bit more space to work with these and you know I think it just looks nice when they're the peg is properly centered above it pull these down so what we're doing with the auto patch is we're patching between the hand and the lower arm and we're patching between the upper arm and the lower arm and the way that we're able to do that is I can now grab the hand and drag a connection line to connect that node in. And now I can drag this over and put it right here. So I've created an overlap. Now let's just go back to our normal view and go, holy patches, Batman, look what we just did. 
So I can, all right, it's gonna be kind of hard to do it there. So, well, well, I had the wrong window active. Let's try again. So now with the auto patch here, so we take the lower arm, we feed it in. So the lower arm is going into the composite. So it's display information is going here. And then we're going to overlap or sandwich. So we're creating this sandwich because notice the lower arm is sandwiched between the patch and the hand. And what's happening is by having the line art and the color art separate, it's now using that information to be able to then look for where there's duplication on the display, on the visibility, and then eliminate that so it creates a continuous or seamless look. So now, we're back into our timeline with my animation tool active. If I click on and choose the lower arm, now we can see when we animate, it is continuous with no line. So it now, it's imperative that we have to think about how we draw our color. And I probably want to round that off a little bit on the lower arm so it's a little cleaner at the wrist. Same thing at, well, actually that's kind of, kind of nice that it gives us a little bit of an elbow so it feels kind of like an arm, but we can see how well this works. Now there are some ways we can use additional art layers so then we can have some line that sits on top so that we get a crease at the elbow so there are some things that we can do that are more advanced but we're not going to worry too much about that right now I just know that some people have expressed disappointment that their character has big gaping holes at the joints and want to clean that up. So auto patch is one way that we can do that quite easily. And just remember we're creating this sandwich. So we're sandwiching between a lower node and an upper node. We're sticking that auto patch to cover that. So that allows us to have the display information from the hand and the lower arm going in twice, once through the auto patch, one normally into our composite where it all gets blended together. And that creates the visual of our continuous color without breaks. Good luck and have fun.